In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, monks, and our beloved congregation, those who are with us here in this holy church, and those who are watching us through live streaming, May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you always in his mighty name. Amen. Today, our beloveds, it is the beginning of the Great Lent according to the Julian Old Calendar, which this church follows. I know there are some of our beloveds who have started the Great Lent a week ago, which is okay. We need to pray and ask the Almighty God to unite the church and at least, at least, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus to be celebrated throughout Christendom on the same date. We need to pray for that, my beloveds. It is absolutely profound and of great importance the unification of the resurrection date. We pray all Christians will come into this realization um, in the very, very near future by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just requires a touch from the Lord and some humility from us, and the rest will be history. Amen. Until then, Today is the beginning of the Great Lent. To those who celebrate the Sunday Resurrection according to the Julian Old Calendar. I must say, the holy fire that appears in the tomb of the Lord Jesus, which has been appearing ever since the Lord rose from the dead, the last 2,000 and odd years, I believe it's a very strong and powerful and concise sign from the Lord that this is the date where the Lord chose to be his son his resurrection and that date is in accordance with the Julian calendar my beloved oh we pray for the unity the great Lent the Lord Jesus and the gospel of today which is from Matthew chapter 3 from verses from verse 16 to Matthew 4 till verse 11 talks about his trial that took place in the Judean desert after the Lord was baptized in the river Jordan the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him as the dove and there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then he was led by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, to the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of that, he was hungry. Then the tempter came after the 40 days. Now imagine you don't eat anything, you don't drink anything, and after 40 days... You could just imagine how weak the body would have been after those 40 days have gone by. If you ever been to Israel, uh, this fasting took place uh, around the Jericho area. Now Jericho, my beloved, in summertime, and by the way, the Lord Jesus fasted in summer. Okay? Don't want to give you too much information now and confuse you. But the Lord Jesus fasted around summertime. And it is the hottest place you could ever be during summertime. Temperatures can literally reach close to 60 degrees Celsius. And the humidity of that region is probably three to four times the humidity of Sydney at its best, at its peak. So it was extremely difficult terrains and very severe weathers. And the Lord was tempted in the heart of that severity. Three temptations. Now these three temptations were not only 
given to the Lord at the time and that was it. The Lord Jesus was tempted throughout his life from the moment he was born till the moment he was crucified. His life was never empty of trials, temptations, tribulations. These, they go with you throughout your life's journey on earth. But these three temptations, they sum up every temptation you could ever think of that you go through throughout your life on earth. The first one, the tempter said to the Lord Jesus, if you are the son of God, say to the stone to be bread. The Lord replied and said, it is not by bread alone a man shall live, but by every word that is uttered from the mouth of God. The second one, he took him um, to the pinnacle of the temple and he said, cast yourself down from here because it is written that he will, he will charge his angels to carry you on their hands lest your, lest your foot um, stumble against a stone. The Lord said, do not tempt the Lord your God. And the third temptation, he took him on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glories. And he said, if you bow down and worship me, I shall give you all that. And the Lord replied and said, away with you, Satan. It is uh, to your God, your Lord God, you shall worship and him alone you shall serve. All three replies from the Lord Jesus, you find that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. One thing we see here, that Satan is very knowledgeable when it comes to the Holy Bible. He actually knows it by heart. So if you ask Satan, I'm not going to say go and ask him, okay, don't do that. But if you really were to ask Satan, where is this uh, word, where is it in the Bible? He'll tell you. Which book, which chapter, which verse? He knows the Bible inside out. It, it looks that, that Satan tempted the Lord through and by the word of God, the Holy Bible. But you see, the Lord Jesus, he was well equipped. So he replied to him with the word of God. You can only overcome Satan by the power of the word of the Lord. This is telling us that we need to become more familiar with the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible is not that book that you place on a shelf in your house and keep it clean. No, it needs to be worn out. It needs to be used. As somebody said, if your Bible is absolutely new then you are worn out and if the bible is worn out then you're absolutely new so which one do you want to be you want to be worn out or do you want to be new it all depends on how you apply yourself to that holy book we need to read the holy bible always if you are the son of god Say to the stone to be bread. This is to do with the body of the human. If you are the son of God, cast yourself from that edge of the temple, the pinnacle of the temple. This is to do with the spirit of the human. And I'll give you the kingdoms and their glories. If you bow down and worship me, this is to do with the soul of the human. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, St. Paul states very clearly that a human being is made out of body, soul, and spirit. There is a temptation for the body. There is a temptation for the spirit. There is a temptation for the soul. And the Lord today is giving us a cure, an answer, a solution to every temptation. What is the temptation of the body? Lust. What is the temptation of the body? Lust. What is the cure for the lust? Fasting. 
What is the cure for the lust? Fasting. You see, when our body is strong, when our body is fed well, looked after, um, always on diet, looking good, baby. Putting the Versace and the Chanel and going downtown, brother, maintaining your body to the best of the best, giving it everything it needs, making everything happen for it. You want to go out? Let's go. You want to dance? Let's dance. You want to sing? Let's sing. You want to go on holidays? Let's go. I'll give you what you want. As long as the eye, the body is healthy, as long as the body is happy, I'm happy. In here, Satan will tempt you very, very strongly and powerfully and make you fall. What is the cure? Fasting. What does fasting do to the body? Weakens the body. Now, some people use fasting as a mean of punishment for the body. Don't ever punish your body. You need to discipline your body. There is a huge difference. The Lord did not say go and fast and kill yourself. No. But the Lord says when you are fasting, you are teaching your body that not everything you want, you will get. So don't be naughty. Be quiet and sit. Next time the body says, let's go clubbing, say, shut up. Next time the body says, I want to dance with somebody, say, shut up. I want to drive fast, say, be quiet. I want to put the sabufa khabibi in the back seat and go, wa -a -wa -a -duf -duf. say, in your dream. Michelangelo was asked once to make a painting that depicts fasting. So he said, leave me alone. Come back after a couple of weeks. They came back. He drawn this beautiful portrait, split it in half. One half, a big fatso pig and a skeleton eagle. The pig, so fat, so chubby, so healthy, walking, dragging the eagle behind it on the ground, dragging it. The other side, a very healthy, strong eagle and a very skeleton pig, <laughs> grabbing the pig and flying with it extremely high in the heavens. They looked at it, they didn't understand what he meant. So they asked him, Michael, what do you mean? What is this? We asked you to paint something about fasting. What is this? He said, I'll tell you what it is. The pig is the body. The eagle is the spirit. When you feed the pig the body and make it fat and healthy, you are starving the spirit. The body will drag that spirit, that starving skeleton spirit behind it in the streets of King's Cross, Las Vegas, Star City Casino. The pig will drag you in the pig's field. And the temptations of this world and the lust of this world. He said, but when you look after the spirit, feed it and make it healthy, it is going to be a very strong eagle. Stop feeding that body. Make it weak. For the eagle spirit grabs that body and make it fly high into the heavens and become a spiritual being instead of a physical materialistic person. Fasting is to discipline the body. When you go for a few hours without eating anything, the body is weak. The tummy is making noises. <laughs> but what happens when the body is weak, you tend to be more in control of your eyes, of your ears, and of your tongue. You know, when someone is healthy, 
it's very easy for that someone to gossip about people, isn't it? Like a simple thing. It's very easy to gossip about them. It's very easy to go and stick your nose where it doesn't belong and see who got married, who got divorced, who built, who destroyed, who did what, that I want to know everything about my next door neighbor. But when I'm sick, do you think I'm going to go and see what my neighbor is doing? No, I'm sick. All I'm doing, I'm begging God to have mercy on me and make me wholesome again. All I want, to be healthy again. I'm so of a good boy and a good girl when I'm sick. The moment I'm healthy, <laughs> we have a saying in Arabic, رجعت حليمة العادة القديمة. Halima is, an, is a girl's name. We say we, Halima went back to her old habits. The moment Halima got well, she went back to her old habits once again. We cannot keep on looking after the body and ignoring the spirit. I always say this. If the time we spend on going through diets, special diets for the body. If we spend 5% of that time on dieting the spirit, man, we would have been all saints. We would have been all saints. You know what? I have been doing some great research. Okay? So what have you come up with? Yes. I'll eat an apple in the morning. Wow. Couple of walnuts at lunchtime. Habibi. And at, in dinner, oh no, nothing, just a little fruit because I want to sleep, you know, in a peaceful night's sleep. Why don't you do that with your spirit? Say, in the morning, I'm going to pray for five minutes for the sake of my spirit. In the afternoon, I'm going to digest what I prayed about. At night time, I'll contemplate on it so that when I wake up, I have dreamt about what I was contemplating on. I had a very peaceful night. Break the lust of the body by fasting. Now, in our church, fasting for the next 40, 50 days, we are 100% vegan. No dairy products. No meat, no fish, nothing. Vegetables, baby. Vegano. Oh, that's a cardinal, sorry. <laughs> we go vegan. We go vegan. What is the issue of the spirit? What is the weakness of the spirit? Pride. Pride, my beloved. Satan, the enemy, took the Lord Jesus to that pinnacle of that temple. Pinnacle, it's a high place. What's a high place trying to tell me? Being boastful. I'm really elevated. I'm right there, up there. Everyone is below me. I'm going to look down, down at everyone else because I'm the best of the best. I'm the smartest. I'm the genius of the geniuses. I am it. Everyone needs to look up to me and come and seek my counsel and my advice. I am the best of the best. Pride is the problem of the spirit. And to prove this, the very first sin that took place in heaven was pride. That angel was from the Cherub order, the highest level in the angelic orders, the cherubims, who later on became Satan. He was an angel from the highest rank in the angelic orders, the most beautiful and the wisest of all. But what happened to this angel? Pride engulfed him because pride attacks the spirit. This is the weakness of the spirit. Just like lust is the weakness of the body and we need to heal it with fasting, so as pride is the weakness of the spirit and the medication for that is prayer. Prayer. 
Why is it a struggle for us to pray? Why is it so easy to listen to someone singing and so hard praying? It's a struggle. Have you tried it? Have you experienced it? You know when you're sitting watching something on TV or on YouTube, whatever, you're fully alert. The moment you start praying, you begin to yawn. Your eyes start closing. And then all of a sudden you have a headache, backache, the legs are shaking, and you're turning and tossing. And people come to me and they say, Father, is it okay? I think it's okay, Father. Can I just sleep in my bed and pray instead of stand or kneel? God is merciful. God will hear me. I don't need to be standing. I don't need to be kneeling. Can I just snort it off on that bed and say, Our Father who art in heaven. Oh, and before I finish it, I'm gone. And the moment they say, there is a movie on. Yes, Habibi, I'm coming. Or let's go out. Oh, yes. But when it comes to prayer, it's a struggle. I'm praying. Before, before prayer, I couldn't remember my name. Once I started praying, I realized the clothes are in the washing machine. <laughs> the, the food is on fire. So-and-so's birthday, I forgot to call. I will remember everything under the sun and my memory will be so sharp, it will take me back 500 years. Once I stop praying, I have dementia. What did you say five minutes ago? Huh? I don't know. It's a struggle. Why? Because Satan doesn't want you to pray. For one simple reason. Because he's after your spirit. And to get your spirit, he needs to come through the body. The weakest point in the human being. The weakest in you is your body. The strongest is your spirit. It's like in a marathon. The body is bronze. The soul is silver. The spirit is gold. You come first, you get gold. You come second, you get silver. You come third, you get bronze. After that, see you later. Nothing. He comes through the body to get to the spirit. So what does he do with the body? Go and have fun. Go out with your friends. You only live once. You're not a monk. You're not a nun. Don't be so complicated. You need to take it easy. Just go with the flow, brother. Can't you see the whole world, what they do? Everybody goes out and have fun. You go with the same flow. So when you go out, you go out, you go out. Eventually, after a little while, you don't know how to pray anymore. You cannot pray anymore. You cannot. What happens? Pride attacks the spirit. Because that was what attacked the spirit, the angel. Angels are spirits. What attacked that spirit was pride. Number one enemy of the Lord Jesus. Pride. You know when the Lord Jesus came, the very first thing ever asked of everyone who chose him to be their Lord and Savior, once we chose the Lord to be our good shepherd, the first thing before you make any step in his path, the first thing he will say before you make a move, you need to deny yourself humility. That's the first thing. He's not going to come and say, I want you to be holy. No, he will say, I want you to be humble because if there is no humility, there is no holiness. If there is no humility, there is no life. 
because life comes from the Lord and the only way for that life to be mine I need to die to my old person in order to live in this new person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth all humility he is all humility I will challenge you you read the entire New Testament there is not one miracle one sign anything the Lord Jesus did unless it was done for his father nothing for himself nothing nothing everything was to glorify his dad they came and said Lord Lord he said not everybody that says Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven it is he who does the will of my dad if you love me love my father I came to do the will of my dad don't love me love daddy you've done it all what did daddy give Jesus miracles the ministry of miracles none of the miracles he did for himself everything every miracle he performed was to glorify his dad why because he is humility I don't live for myself Jesus says I live for the one who sent me my father who art in heaven I live for my dad that's why he lives as a human I'm talking that's why he lives forever because he emptied himself he allowed daddy to fill him completely to fill him up The pr pride is the enemy of the spirit. To heal the spirit, you need to pray. What is prayer? Prayer is to connect. Every time you connect to God, you are praying. Therefore, prayer is not only words, it is also deeds. A prayer can be deeds as well. Imagine you go and visit someone in hospital. We pray for the full recovery of every person that is sick in hospital. In Jesus' mighty name. But you go and visit someone in hospital. But that visit, you done it in Jesus' holy name. You said, Lord, let's go and visit so-and-so in hospital. From the moment you left the house all the way to the hospital. And your time that you spent there and came back all the way home. That was all a prayer. Why? Because the moment you connect to Jesus, it becomes a prayer. So can you pray all the time? Yes. And the Lord called us to pray all the time. In fact, the Lord Jesus, he did not only pray, he became prayer itself. He is prayer. Because everything he did, everything he said, he was 100% connected to his heavenly father. So all his life was one simple prayer. That's why his spirit, the human spirit that is in him, was not overcome by pride. He stepped on pride, therefore he stepped on Satan. What is Satan? Pride. Satan can't humble himself. It's not in him. He lost it from the very beginning in heaven. He lost it. Satan will always pump in you self-exaltation, false glory. He'll bring things your way. He'll bring people and he'll let those people say to you very beautiful things. Oh, you're a saint. You're so faithful. You're so kind. You're, there is none like you and then you start becoming a big balloon and then you start flying high but when you fly high the balloon is going to explode and you'll be coming down on your head so when someone comes and says you're a saint go to Fairfield Nita City don't stay there <laughs> run away run away don't stand there and say, oh, please don't call me a saint. You know, like, I'm a sinner. I'm the... Please, get a life. Grow up. This is an actment. 
You know, when, when people start saying, Oh no, Allah, please, please, I'm a sinner. They're acting. You know who's truly living humility? The one who doesn't talk. <laughs> the moment you start saying, No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, please, no, 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 no you're acting. <laughs> Satan's got you. Don't talk. There was this saint in the third century, Saint Macarius, from our beloved Coptic church. And he's also a saint in our church, by the way. In the Assyrian church, yes? <laughs> he's a saint. He is in the prayer book. We have his name written in the Church of the East prayer book. Saint Macarius, beautiful saint in the third century. One day he was in his cell. He was a monk and he was a leader of a monastic life. So he was praying in his cell, sitting on the ground on the floor and, and praying in absolute silence. Satan came and appeared in that cell looking like Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. You see, some people say um, there is no such thing Satan can come and do this and do that. No, because you're a baby, you see. You're not mature enough in spirituality to know what Satan does. The Lord will only allow Satan to tempt you according to your stature. If you are a kindergarten level, Satan will come and tempt you at a kindergarten level. Saint Macarius was at a university level, not kindergarten. So you will see things, whoa. <laughs> Out of this world so anyway he came appeared in the cell like the Lord Saint Macarius didn't make a whisper no, he didn't move nothing nothing he just had his head down closed eyes absolutely silent Satan said to Macarius shame on you your master himself came all the way to your cell and you are so disrespectful you didn't get up and bow before your master shame on you saint macarius so quietly so peacefully without making any big moves and making a big fuss he said look if you are jesus or not i don't know but one thing i know why would Jesus come and see someone who is nothing but the greatest sinner ever to exist? Why would the Lord waste his time on someone like me? Satan exploded out of anger and said, Oh, you Macarius, you burn me with your humility. You burn me with your humility. You shred me to pieces. You want to overcome Satan? Be humble. You want to be humble? You need to be a prayer. I could go on for a, for a long time. Would you like me to do so? I am very tempted. You know, probably some of you have seen me on YouTube. When this good old looking bishop talks, I'll leave you with this and it never ends. <laughs> Especially during lockdown, everybody was at home. There was nobody working tomorrow. Man, I was preaching for two, three hours here. You guys spoiled me. Now I'm trying to give up on this habit. I'm struggling. <laughs> I've, it, like Friday, I was so happy. I looked at the, at the time, 54, almost 55 minutes. I said, amazing. This should go into the book. Uh, Guinness Book of Record, I broke all the world records. I've done it in 55 minutes. Guess what? I went on for another 55 minutes saying, I'll leave you with this. The soul, the body's weakness, lust. How do you treat it? With fasting. The spirit weakness, pride. How do you treat, deal with it? With prayer. The soul's weakness, greed give me give me a dollar no way in the world get out of my sight you'll get nothing out of me 
So many poor, rich people, millionaires and billionaires, not even a cent you can get out of them. Anything you ask them for except money. When it comes to money, they will sell their own mom and dad. Greed. And greed is not just money. Greed is about everything. What is the cure to greed? Charity. Giveaways. Because they are used to receiving. Don't be a receiver, be a giver for a change. To this, the Lord Jesus said it in a very humorous way. By the way, the Lord has a great sense of humor. He doesn't joke, but he's got a great sense of humor. He's not, he's serious, but in a nice way. Not in a complicated, like, you know, unbearable. No, no, he's got a sense of humor. You talk to him, he can make you smile and laugh, but in a very holy way. Yeah, it's beautiful. So the Lord gave an answer in a very humorous, beautiful way. He said, when you come to give a, to give a donation, to, give a, to, to do a charity, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. What is the Lord literally saying here? He said, don't use both hands when you come to give money to a street beggar. I was walking and I saw someone sitting at the, at the side of the road. I felt, felt sorry for that person. I came to give him something. He said, when you come to give that, some, that person something, don't use both hands. Why? Because if you use both hands, you'll start going through the notes in your wallet. You'll start counting. Oh, there's a hundred, there's a fifty, there's a twenty, there's a ten, there's a five. I'll give him the five. He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. He said, use one hand. One hand is like this. Oh, it's a hundred. <laughs> oh, my heart is broken. Oh. Man, if it wasn't the Lord watching, I would have buried you right now, you. Mm. You just took my hundred dollars. Ah, I was going dinner. Give the hundred bucks. Your heart broke. Well done. Beautiful. Now you are doing the right thing to heal yourself from this delusion called greed. It's a delusion. You know, it's extremely funny, but it's not funny. But it's funny. What's funny and not funny? The humans mentality when we grow older and start fathoming things understanding comprehending things we all come to this realization this reality we're all mortal beings we're gonna die one day true or not right I don't need to go and and get a university degree to find out if I'm gonna die or not I know the moment I grow older I know where is my dad? My dad gone. My physical dad, my earthly dad, long time ago. May God rest his soul in peace. Gone, like so many people. We all know we will go from this world one day. May God bless you and give you a very long life. But we will go. We all know that nothing in this world is ours. These very clothes are not mine. This very cross is not mine. This very place that I stand on is not mine. That very chair or throne or whatever you want to call it is not mine. This very church is not mine, yet I'm a bishop. And people come and say, let's go and see the bishop at this church. This church is where the bishop is, but none of it is mine. The car I drive is not mine. The house I live in is not mine. Nothing is, not, is mine. Nothing. But yet, I live this delusion. I live this dream that everything is mine.
When I chase materialism and hold on to it, when I become so greedy, greediness leads me to blindness. I become blind. Spiritually, I'm blind. Because what happens, my beloved? When I am not a giver, I always wait to be a receiver. What happens with someone who just wants to take, never gives? He is living a lie. It's called a lie. See, in Arabic, in the Arabic language, how many of you speak Arabic and read and write here? You understand? Very good. Excellent. You see, in Arabic, a charity or a, a charitable deed or an almsgiving is called sadaqa. This is in the formal language, sadaqa. Now, sadaqa, this word literally derives from the word sidq. What is sidq? Someone who is truthful. So, a charity, a charitable deed, when you give, when you donate, in Arabic, literally, it is called truth. And when you take, not give, what is the opposite of truth? Lie. It's a lie. So when you are just a receiver, not a giver, you are living a lie. What is a lie? A lie is a dream. What is a dream? A dream is a story with no basis to it. I'll explain. I slept and I saw this dream. In this dream, I saw I was a king. Hello, Habibi. How much you want? Hundred million dollars? No problem. In the dream, I'm a king. Now, when we dream, while we are dreaming, we don't realize it's a dream to us. This is it. This is the reality of everything. This, I'm a king, man. I believe it. I'm living it. No one can tell me otherwise. And as I am enjoying this kingship, my mom, God bless every mom, my mom comes and taps me on the shoulder and says, wakey, wakey, it is Sunday, we're going to church. Okay, boys and girls, we're going where? To church, yes. Not anywhere else on a Sunday. I kill you. My name is Ahmed Allahu Akbar. So my mom tapped me on the shoulder and said, wake up, we're going to church. The moment I opened my eyes, I'm a cleaner, not a king. <laughs> what is a lie is a dream. What is a dream? A story with no basis. King David says, the life of every human is like a dream at the awakening. Our life, King David says, our life is like a dream at the awakening. Because at the awakening, everything I believed in, everything I held on to was nothing but a big lie. See, the moment I woke up, everything was gone. It is exactly as so. The moment the spirit leaves the body, everything here was nothing but a big lie. I had a mansion, gone. I had a Lamborghini, gone. I had hundred billion dollars in the bank account, gone. I had, I had, I had, gone. Before I blinked my eyes, it was nothing but a lie. Why are you greedy then? Think, my dear friend. So sad. Some of these people in this world, the amount of money they spend so crazy on silly things, they could have saved and gave so much to so many people in desperate need.
They're spending billions in sending rockets into space. That's a sick mentality. Sick. They're spending billions and billions on weapons of mass destruction. And they are boastful about it. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> You come to these superpowers of the world, they stand there with great pride and they say, we have nuclear warheads. The submarines can fire from beneath the waters. This rocket can travel continents with a nuclear warhead in it that can wipe Australia, that can wipe America, that can wipe any country in this globe. Wow. You are a genius, my dear friend. So you spend billions upon billions upon billions of dollars of creating these nuclear warheads in order to kill yourself with it. What a genius you are. Why greed? Why didn't you feed the people in Africa? No, I don't want to feed them. Why? Because I don't want them to be healthy i don't want them to be strong i want them to remain slaves to me slaves why did you go into the middle east and create war ba built on a big lie i'll name him george bush senior and junior freemason liars Hey, listen, mate, I come from Iraq, huh? You can't lie to me. But not just because I come from Iraq, you can't lie to me because I come from Jesus Christ. That's why you can't lie to me. My Lord tells me who you are. Iraq has never, ever had weapons of mass destruction. Never. That was the biggest lie ever. Did you know they killed over 3 million Iraqis based on a lie three million anybody made a big deal out of it no what they did in syria what they did in lebanon and what they did to the world with so-called corona greed biggest lie I'm not saying for people to come and argue, say uh, uh, you're saying the, the truth or you're telling you're not saying the truth. No, 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 I don't care. I know it's a lie because I know you guys. <laughs> Billy boy, I know everyone. Yeah, I know you all. I don't need anyone to come and tell me. You may say, you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. My dad is. You're not a scientist. My Jesus is. You're not a prophet. My Jesus is. You don't know everything. My Jesus knows everything because he's God. And my God told me. So when my God told me it's a lie, then the whole world comes and says it's not. It means nothing. But why all these lies? Greed. Greed. We make more money, money gives me power, power gives me control, enslaving people. And I'll leave you with this. That was very dangerous. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. When we read in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, the days of creation, <clears throat> six days, and then the seventh day, God rested. Day number one, God called it good. Day number three, God called it good twice. Day number four, good. Day number five, good. Day number six called it very good. Why? Because Adam was created, the image and the likeness of God, the son of God, the son to God. That's why it was very good. This is my son. Day two, God called it nothing. Neither good nor bad. Or anything why what happened in day two 
God created the firmament and waters above the firmament and waters below the firmament. Above and below. Now, what is what is day? What are these days? One day we're going to talk about this. What are these days? What, what's day two? Waters above and waters below. Waters above, above master, below slave. God is saying, the day that comes, any human being, any of my own creations, any human being that enslaves another human being, that day will not be written in my book. I'll wipe it out of my book. It doesn't exist because I God never created the human to enslave his own brother human I created you to be all equally brothers and sisters loving one another the only one who should rule over your life is I God the very creator the day any human enslaves another human that day in my book I God does not exist I'll wipe it because I will never accept humans enslaving humans I will never accept that because love never enslaves love sets free doesn't enslave love turns you into the Sun free in your father's house but greed made the human enslave his brother human greed break it with a charitable deed fasting weakness of the body lost deal with it with fasting Weakness of the spirit, pride, deal with it with prayer. Weakness of the soul, greed, deal with it with charitable deeds. On a different note, and I have to say this. May the Lord have mercy. I won't go too much into it, but I believe the other day somebody sent me a video of a church in Glebe. I don't know, is it true? Has anyone seen it? It's true? In Glebe. This person went to a Catholic church in Glebe and he was refused entry into the church because that priest in that church decided to celebrate whatever he was celebrating for the LGBTQRSTUZVYZ. If this is true, and I'm being told that it is by some people, <clears throat> as a Christian, as Christians we are one. You can call yourself Catholic, you can call yourself Orthodox, Christ, that's where the word Christianity came from. Christ is one. We divided the church. That was not of Christ, but it was of our own human dilemma and weakness. So as a Christian, I can talk to my beloved Christian Catholic, that just like the way I can talk to my beloved Christian Orthodox. So in Christianity, we are one. If this is true, then I'm asking the bishop who is in charge of that diocese and in charge of that priest to reprimand that priest immediately for doing an evil act. In the house of the Lord, shame on that so-called priest he needs to be reprimanded, excommunicated from the church immediately. 
For if that priest comes and says, I did not know what I was doing, then he is a son of a snake, son of the snake. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you offend your Lord Jesus? How dare you? How dare you? Is there any more real men for Christ? Or are they all cowards? Where are the church leaders? If the bishop, I don't want to name him, but I will if he doesn't do anything. If the bishop does not take action immediately and reprimand this so-called priest, I won't call him a priest, this so-called priest, then you are in it as well, my dear Bishop. And if the Pope does not come in absolute clarity and put an end to this stupidity and nonsense and evilness, then you are in it as well. What a shameful, what a shameful Christians we have become. Shame on us. I am not talking, don't say this guy is an Orthodox. No, I'm a Christian. I am hurting. I am hurting to see such evilness done in the sight of Christ the King. Shame on you, so-called priest. You are a coward. You are the son of the snake. And how dare you celebrate whatever you were celebrating? Who do you think you are? You are of your father, Satan. Listen. People are free to choose whatever they want to do, but shame on such government, shame on some, on such generation to come and say to a little kid, now I am angry. Yes, I am. For the Lord, I am. To come and say to a little kid, you need to feel your gender. So you are a boy. That doesn't mean you are a boy just because you're a boy. The physical whatever that doesn't prove you're a boy you have to feel that you're a boy and if you don't feel it then feel whatever male in between or an it or an alien like they say to have such leaders accepting such evil both in the secular world and the religious sector shame on both of you shame on both of you because this is to do with humanity, nothing to do with religion. It's to do with humanity. God created you male and female. Shame on you to go against that. And then to dare and come and challenge that in the house of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Man, if I see this priest, I'll shred him to pieces. I'll shred him to pieces. And then for this priest to dare and refuse entry to someone who is a faithful person coming he's a sinner coming he wants to pray he wants to repent he wants to receive the body and the blood of christ this guy gets refusal and nonsense gets acceptance and there's no more men there is no more men you want to go and be a male, female, and in between, that's your choice. Get out of my sight. That's your choice. You do not, you do not force me to accept you over my dead body. Over my dead body. Over my dead body. And Australia, not Australia, no. Australia is a beautiful country. But such governments and such church leaders can go to hell. If they want to force such evil, then they all can go to hell. What is this? Like I honestly, I am still shocked. I'm trying my hardest to say this is not really happening. I am trying my hardest to say, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's a dream, it's a nightmare. Not a dream, it's a nightmare. I'm going to wake up. But to bring it now into the church, and you call yourself Catholic, you don't represent the Catholic church. You get out of that church, you so-called priest. If the bishop, I'll give him one week, if the bishop does not reprimand this so-called priest immediately, then you are exactly like that priest. 
and I'm demanding the Pope to come out and speak openly and say Christianity cannot, will not accept such lifestyle. Impossible. If you are going to say as a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ, to say that this is normal, in the name of love, we need to accept and embrace everyone. You are the son of your father, Satan. You are a liar, a deceiver. You are the son of a snake. Christ will never change his mind, will never change his word, will never change his way. Sodom and Gomorrah was burned to the ground because there was absolute evilness done in it. Gays and lesbians. Now, the only reason I'm talking because they brought it into the church. And someone might say, well, you're an Orthodox. Why are you interfering? It's, this is Catholic. Listen, listen, wake up. Hello, anybody home? This is to do with Christ. It's no longer Catholic Orthodox. I'll kick you. I'll kick you. This is to do with Christ. This is to do with the house of my Lord. How dare you do that in it? Mate? I don't give one penny who you are. I don't give one penny. People wake up. I'm not, in, I'm not forcing anyone to choose what, what they want to do. Please don't get me wrong. You want to go and live your life, you'll answer for what you're doing. I'll advise you. You don't want to listen? Fine. Go and do it as you please. But for you to come and bring it into the church and say it's okay, man, get out of my side before I put you through a shredder. Before I put you through a shredder. Definitely, we are living in the end of times. People are calling evil good, and they are calling good evil. It's exactly what the Lord God said in the book of Isaiah. You, to that generation, you are calling the light darkness and darkness light. You're calling the sweet bitter and the bitter sweet. It is exactly what is happening today. We're calling the beautiful ugly, and the ugly beautiful. We're loving Satan, hating Jesus Christ. I'll step on Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm giving this bishop one week. You better reprimand this so-called priest. He needs to be kicked out of that place. He is not there to be, he's not to be there. Period. You call yourself Catholic. How dare you? I don't care it's Australia. I don't care it's the 21st century. I don't care what the whole world does. You come and force me to do something that the Lord disapproves of over my dead body. You need to kill me. Do you understand? You need to kill me. Because that will never happen. Shame on you, so-called priest. Defiling the house of the Lord. So get lost and get out of my father's house. You son of the snake. I had to let it out of my system. I'm giving the bishop one week. He better act. We want to see real men. Not cowards. Not hypocrites. Not going in a sneaky way. Not going to the Lord at night time like Nicodemus. You better go to the Lord in the day, not night time. Don't go in a sneaky way and hide. Ah, because so-and-so doesn't see me. So-and-so doesn't talk about me. I'm going to go in a sneaky way. And I'm going to go and sugarcoat it to the government and say, You know what? You know what? You know what? Let's be nice to each other. Get a life. I want to know these Christians. Oh, I even, I mean, they are, even the, the, the voting is all rigged. It's all, it's all a lie, right? Yeah. But if, if any Christian, if any Christian 
votes for someone who does not accept God, does not believe in God, what kind of a Christian are you? Hey? You're giving your vote to an atheist? This atheist will come back and haunt you. The lefties are ruling nowadays so-called governments. Lefties to the core. Hating Christianity. You need to come on Friday. Man. Revelation chapter 13. Yeah? You need to come on Friday. You want to know what's happening in the world? The church is infiltrated by the secret societies, period. On all levels. Because what is happening is beyond, beyond abnormality. Beyond. I think, I think like this, this Satan is saying, and I didn't expect to be successful so much. Like people really doing better than me. Yeah, I'm learning from them. I remember this uh, story. <laughs> I'll leave you with it. Huh? What time is it, Father? I got carried away. But I, 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 I honestly, I couldn't hold myself. 15 past? This monk was living in a monastery. It was during the Great Lent, like now. He got up one day and he felt like having an egg. He can't eat eggs, no dairy, nothing. So he looked around. He was in the church. There was nobody in the church, no monks, alone. So he brought two sticks of wood. You know, the good olden days, they used to build the, the churches with rocks, you know, different shapes all over the place. So there was always gaps between the rocks. So he brought these two sticks and he, he put them between, in that gap. He put the egg on it, on those sticks, and he brought a candle and he lit it and he put it under the egg. Cooked it, baby, beautiful. He peels it off, he eats the egg, collects the, the eggshell and walks away and he says, yes, I've done it. I ate an egg during Great Lent. Yippee. Another monk came later on cleaning the, the church. That other monk, poor thing, he, he didn't see. There was one little tiny eggshell left behind as evidence. This guy came sweeping the floor. He sees an eggshell. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. So he goes and calls the abbot. The abbot is the head of the monastery. Father, some, one, one monk ate an egg. He broke, he broke the fasting. He said, go and call all the monks immediately here in the church. They all line up. He says, look, my children, I am your spiritual dad. I'm not here to punish you, but I'm here to discipline you. All I want for you to tell me who ate this egg today. I won't throw you out. I won't I'm just going to tell you how to fix this problem so it doesn't reoccur again. This monk became sort of more confident. He put his hand up and he says, Father, I ate the egg. He said, son, come over here. Explain to me what happened. How did you end up eating the egg? He said, Father, it was Satan. <laughs> Satan rocks up right there and then. He shows up, boom, a piece. He said, it was Satan that told me to eat the egg. Satan a piece. Satan looks at the abbot. He says, listen, Mr. Abbot, <laughs> not abbot, the other abbot, Tony abbot. This is a different abbot, right? He says, look, listen, listen, uh, monastery leader. If you were going to say that I put that idea on, how, on, on to eat the egg, I'll accept it. I put that idea in his head. But for me to come up with the genius idea on how to cook the egg, I have never ever heard of a such genius way. In Assyrian, we call it Patuch <laughs> Kumta. Blackface. We surpass Satan in certain areas. He's learning from us. We need to pray, my beloveds. But um, an apostolic church 
to accept nonsense, uh, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. This is painful for all Christians, not just Catholics, for all Christians. Because we are in it together. At the end, we are Christians. If we really are Christians, I just wonder now. May the Lord have mercy on all of us, my beloved. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord for forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus guide you and protect you always, my beloved, always. Um, as we said, today is the beginning of the Great Lent. Father Daniel and Father George are your spiritual fathers for the English service. Whatever you need, you can always reach out to them. They are absolutely wonderful priests, wonderful human beings. So Father Daniel and Father George, they are here at your service. Whatever you need, seek an advice, confession, uh, prayer, anything. They are here for you. Um, and I love you, but Jesus loves you the most. God bless. Was I angry? Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you, with us, and with all who receive him in the kingdom of heaven forever.